Hello, everyone. Welcome to my class in Accountancy, Business, and Management. Today, we will be discussing a new subject that is the Fundamentals in Accountancy and Business Management 1 or simply Accounting 1. And our topic in Accounting 1 today is the Principles and Assumptions of Accounting. Okay, by the way, for my students in Tolentino and Amor Solo, kumusta kayong lahat? And also to, to students from other schools, how are you today? Come on, join me in my class and I hope you will learn a lot. Okay, for today, we will be showing you, I will be showing you here the accounting assumptions. We have five and I will discuss it individually. Number one, the account economic entity assumption, accrual basis assumption, going concern assumption, monetary unit assumption, and the time period assumption. Okay, let's discuss it one by one. When we say economic entity assumption, that means that the owners of the business and the business itself are treated separately. Okay, for example, uh, I, uh, I have a business and the name of my company is ABC Company. Okay. For today, I will go I will go to a supermarket and buy personal my personal needs, grocery items, personal necessities, etc. Do I have to record the amount of money? For example, I I, I was able to spend uh, 10,000 pesos for my personal needs. Do I have to record the 10,000 in my ABC company as part of its expenses? Correct. You do not record it because my personal expenses are treated separately and differently from my business expenses. Okay? So that is the economic entity assumption. Number two, we have the accrual basis assumption. What do you mean by accrual? Okay, accrual basis assumption tells us that we should recognize revenue when it is earned and we should recognize expenses when it was incurred. What does it mean? How do we apply this? Okay, for example, um, my ABC company, Mario, bought, uh, bought 10,000 worth of goods from, a, from my company, ABC, okay? And then, he paid me in advance. He paid me uh, 10,000 pesos. Okay, he paid me 10,000 pesos for his purchases from ABC company. Do I need to record uh, a, uh, the purchases that he bought, that Mario bought from my company today because he paid today? Do I need to record it today? No, I will record my revenue during the time when I will deliver the goods that he has purchased from me. For example, he paid me today, but I will be delivering the purchases that he got from my from ABC company tomorrow, that I will record the revenue tomorrow because that is the time when I should recognize the revenue, when I will deliver the products. Okay, the same thing with expenses. You record expenses when it was incurred, regardless of when the money was uh, received or paid. Okay? Then number three, we have the going concern assumption. What do you mean by going concern assumption? It means that when I opened ABC company, okay, I opened my own business, ABC company, I have the assumption that ABC company will exist for 5, 10, 15, 20, or maybe 50 years or beyond. So when I open a business, I always put in mind I open this for a, I open this ABC and this will exist for a very long period of time. And as such, I should record all my purchases at cost, not on the fair market value. Okay. Next, number three, number four, we have the monetary unit assumption. This as this assumption tells us that when we record something, when we record on financial in uh, transactions. It must be valued in peso or dollars or whatever is the denomination, okay? The monetary amount. It should not be, uh, for example, um, I bought uh, 100 boxes of, of 
notebooks in Divisoria and the amount is uh, 1 million pesos. I should record in my in my financial uh, recordings or in my journal and in my ledger 1 million pesos, okay? Not I not that I will record only the number of uh, the number of boxes. I should record it by by the monetary value, okay? In pesos, in dollars, or whatever denomination that we are using, but in the if you are in the Philippines, you use the Philippine peso. Okay. Next, we have the time period assumption. What do you mean by time period assumption? Okay, this means equal time intervals in the preparation of your financial statements. Um, for example, you will prepare financial statements, and you have the option of using or reporting your financial statements monthly, okay, quarterly, semi-annually, annually, or whatever, as long as it should be consistent. And also, we may use the calendar year or the fiscal year. When we say calendar year, uh, we start from January to December, okay? When we say fiscal year, we, we use a 12-month period, which may not necessarily begin at on January and end at December. You may begin on June and end it on December. June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Maybe you you start on July 1, July 1 to December 31, okay? Or July 1 to the next year, July 1, the following year. As long as it is a 12-month period, not necessarily January to December. That is the fiscal year. Normally, we use the calendar year for, for tax purposes. Okay. But the company may select whatever is their pleasure. Okay. Next, we have the... Okay, we have already discussed the accounting assumptions. Let us go to the basic accounting principles. We have seven. The cost principle, the full disclosure principle, the matching principle, the revenue recognition principle, materiality principle, conservatism principle, and objectivity principle. Let's do it one by one. When we speak of cost principle, we record our purchases or we record financial transactions at the acquisition cost. Okay? Why? Because this is more reliable. This is supported by receipts. For example, I will buy a machine for my company. And when I buy the machine, of course, the supplier will give me a receipt. And the receipt tells me the cost of the machine. Okay? And that cost should be on the, the record on that receipt will be the acquisition cost of the machine. And that acquisition cost should be used in all my transactions, in all my recordings. And it is not advisable to use the market value or the, the what's this, other valuation methods, okay? It would be safe to use the acquisition cost. Then number two, we have the full disclosure principle. What do you mean by full disclosure principle? When we speak of full disclosure principle, that means um, we need to provide sufficient information in our financial statements. For example, you will be presenting your financial statements to other companies, to other maybe to creditors or maybe to the government. What is sufficient information? What do you mean by sufficient information? You have to disclose the accounting principles that you used, okay? What other sufficient information? Maybe you can also use uh, the um, the accounting policies that you used, okay? The significant amounts that are needed needed in your financial statements, okay? Uh, because uh, other parties may may who will look into your financial statements may need some other information. So you need this full disclosure principle. Okay. Next, number three, we have the matching principle. This means we have to match your revenues to your expenses. How does it go? It may be like this. For example, uh, I, I received 100,000 revenues from, from my production of ball pens. Okay? I'm a manufacturing company. Then I should also match 
the 100,000 production of ball pens should have should have a corresponding value in expenses for the same value, for the same amount and value of ball pens, the same quantity. If I incurred uh, 30,000 costs in producing 100,000 uh, sales of this of this pen, then I should reflect it. My revenue should be matched with the expenses. Okay, understood? Now let's go to the revenue recognition principle. Okay, when we say revenue recognition principle, you have to recognize your revenue when the items was when the items were sold or when the services were rendered. Okay. Uh, I have, I think I've discussed this in a while ago in the matching, uh, what maybe matching principle. You have to was this uh recognize revenue only when it was sold, not when, uh, regardless of the time when you receive the cash. The same thing with expenses. You will rev. Uh, uh, but this is only revenue for the rev for the first assumption that I talked about. You have to. Uh, accrual, the accrual basis, you have to report your expenses and your revenue when it was incurred and when it was uh, uh, earned. But here in revenue recognition, you will only recognize your revenue when you have already delivered the items, when you have already earned the, the, the revenue. Okay, next we have the Materiality principle. Okay, materiality principle talks about the significance of amounts. For example, uh, material, meaning the opposite of material is immaterial or not significant. What may be material in company A may not be material to company B. How does it go? Maybe it, it will be like this. Uh, a multi-million company a multi-million company, in a multi-million company, a 10,000 peso discrepancy will not affect the whole financial statements, okay? But in a small company, for example, in my store, I have a, I have a sari sari store, well, a, a discrepancy of 10,000 pesos will affect will be material to the reporting of my financial statements. Because maybe my capital is only 50,000 pesos. So a discrepancy in the financial report of 10,000 pesos will greatly affect my reporting in the financial statements. Okay? So you, we need here a professional judgment. Okay? A professional judgment in, in identifying the significant amount or the insignificant amount. Okay, next we have the conservatism principle. What is conservatism principle? It means when you are when an accountant is given two options, select the one with less effect in net income or less effect on the asset amount. Why? Because conservatism suggests that we 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 anticipate losses, okay? We anticipate losses and we do not anticipate gains immediately. Because we have to be conservative in reporting. For example, what are these losses that I need to anticipate? For example, in a certain company, XYZ company, what, uh, has legal issues and they, they has legal issues and they, they may lose in the in the legal battle. So they have to record it in the financial statement as a note. Notes to the financial statements, number one. You are anticipating a loss in a legal battle because you do not know the effect. It may be a gain or a loss. And you can never anticipate a gain. You can never record a, a gain in legal battles because that, there is always a 50-50% chance. It may be gain or loss. So better anticipate a loss rather than a gain because you have this principle of conservatism. Okay? Next we have the objectivity principle. What do you mean by objectivity principle? An accountant must be impartial. What do you mean by impartial? You must not be. You must not. You must be free of bias. You must be independent. Okay. When you do recording, when you do your financial statement, you must be independent. You must practice your independence. You must be impartial. And how do you do this? When you record something, you always have an evidence or a supporting document, okay, so that 
you're in, you will be impartial in recording or in presenting your financial statements to the owners, to the third parties, to the internal and external users of your financial statements. Okay? I think we're done. Okay, there are three more items. Aside from the assumptions, the principles in accounting, we also have three more characteristics that we need to do in relating accounting information through the financial statements. First, it must be relevant. What do you mean by relevant information? That means uh, when we speak of relevance, it must be uh, it must be verifiable. Okay, I know that's no no that is for reliable reliability. When we speak of relevance, that means it is important. Okay, it is needed. It is vital for the for the users of the information. When you speak of reliability, that means your information can be counter-checked, can be verified, okay? And when we speak of consistency, consistent report, that means you are using the same principles all throughout your accounting period, okay? Especially when you are, uh, when you are doing your depreciation of accounting, in, uh, depreciation of your accounts, etc. When you use this type of this type of principle, you use it consistently, okay? So that your information will be will be what uh, you will be able to have a meaningful and uh, what's this? Will be able to reflect the true story of the company. Okay. So the, I think I have discussed everything, and now I will be presenting here exercise two. Mom, what are these exercises? Well, it tells us that we will identify the accounting assumptions, the accounting principles that I have used in the following circumstances. Okay? You will identify what accounting assumption, what accounting principles used in the... In absence of monetary value, we receive them using memorandum. Okay. For example, in an accounting information and there is no monetary value, we use uh, instead of the instead of the two the debit credit, uh, we use a memorandum to to tell the story of that transaction. Okay, so that's it. I think that is only number one to number twelve. Okay, I think this is very easy for you, and I hope you will be able to answer them correctly. And now here ends my class. And again, thank you very much, and God bless us all. Again, this is Teacher Jonah. Bye!